What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April, and today is Real Talk Wednesday. So before you girls even go ahead and ask what about the hair, I finally changed it up for this video because lately I've been wearing my um, Best Lace Wigs wig that I made with their kinky straight hair, and I love it, like, seriously. So I decided to take a break, and this one here is by Main Chick. This is their Brazilian body wave. I think it's Brazilian or Malaysian, but first of all, let me tell you guys, I did not ask for this particular color. It was already ombre um, but I was shocked when I opened this up on video. I've not uploaded the video yet, but I will either this week or early next week. I love the color. It's so pretty, and I didn't have to do anything to it. It smelled so good when it came to me. I still had to wash it because, you know, I was throwing the tracks around here and there, so it got a little wild and crazy, so I had to tame it down. But that smell, whatever they use in that hair, you can still smell it. I'm going to turn my fan on because I'm, like, super hot. It's 87 degrees or 89 degrees. But, yes, um, the closure, I had to cut a little bit um, because it wasn't ombre, so it was a little bit longer than the rest of where the ombre stopped at, where the ombre started, so I had to cut it because it was too long and it would have overpowered the ombre where it started at. So I cut it. It's four bundles of 24, 24, 22, either 20 or 22 and a, I think it's like 16 or 18 inch closure. I can't remember, but either way, it's super soft. Um, I'm not really um, used to wearing silky straight hair as much as I used to because that's all I will wear. Since I've been wearing like curly hair or kinky straight, that's really like my go-to hair now. So this is like a little bit getting used to because it's not as poofy or full. It's full, but it's not as height. It doesn't have the height like I like. You know what I'm saying? I like it to be like really big. Like not really big, not Texas big, but big. But yeah, so I will get the video up soon. The um, lipstick that I'm wearing is actually by De Bonnet, and it is their Perfection Liquid Lipstick, which I freaking love. And I did do a video with swatches on my channel, so make sure you guys check that out. Other than that, um, everything is everything. Everything is cool. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything that I need to tell you guys? No life changes. Um, hmm. I really can't think of anything. I do have my drink. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the lipstick does wear off, but it still stays on. I'm not really sure how that's working, but it'll get on your straw, but it'll still be on your lips. I have yet to figure that out. But this is like the normal drink that I always drink. Um, it's Bacardi rum and orange juice, and that's it. It is hot outside. That's why I have a tank top on. So, yeah, excuse the cleavage. So, uh, yeah, if you have a Real Talk episode, question, need advice that you would like our opinion on, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk. And if you want to change the name of your characters in your email, please let me know that you did so. So that way I think, or I don't think, or I don't have to think of names for them. So other than that, let's get on to this freaking Real Talk, all right? Okay, so, hi April, I'll change my name to Courtney. I'll try and make this as short as possible. So I am 22 years old, a single mom. My child's father was indicted and sent to prison when I was five months pregnant. He ended up taking a deal, so he pled guilty to a lesser charge and will be home in 2018. I will admit, when this happened, I was completely, completely pissed and upset. But at the end of the day, he's my child's father, and I'll never turn my back on him or see him suffer if I know there is something I can do to help. When we first got together, my mom was upset about the relationship because she said he was taking me too much, he was taking me out too much and taking up too much of my time. Despite his lifestyle and my mom's opinions, he kept me on track and made sure I graduated from college. Fast forward, once he was arrested, she started coming back around and we got a little closer since my child's father wasn't around. I've always felt like she didn't approve of him for me and wanted me to abandon him while he was incarcerated. But she proved everything that I thought true tonight. We've been on bad terms, she and I, lately because I refuse to allow her to file for my child income taxes. I work full time and I support my daughter 100% with no financial help from anyone. I've been supporting my daughter since her father became incarcerated. Well, I just bought my first car on my own, brand new off the lot. 
since I've been working, I've been saving my money and working on my credit so that I can buy a home or at least move out once I have his income to combine with mine. Well, all of a sudden, the shit hit the fan. Can you believe this psycho tried to talk to me and talk crazy to me and thought I was going to be quiet and allow it, meaning her mother? We basically got into a debate and she starts yelling and screaming. This lady had the audacity to try and hit me in front of my child, but ended up hitting my laptop, completely ruining my computer screen. So we exchanged words and now I feel like tonight was the last straw. She talked down upon my child's father and how I'm stupid for sticking by his side and how we're both stupid and blah blah blah. Basically she's spewing a bunch of bullshit. She asked me to give her my house keys and says when I come home from work all of my belongings will be outside. I don't believe that for one second. I know for a fact my stepfather will never allow her to kick me and my daughter out on the street in the dead of winter. My stepdad pays all the bills, so what he says goes. Since I graduated high school, my stepdad has always said as long as I'm working or going to school, he doesn't mind me living at home with them. I pay my own personal bills, but not any household bills. I do, however, help my mom and stepdad if I never, if they ever need to borrow money or need a bill paid until he gets paid. Lately, my mom hasn't been paying her share of the phone bill on time, so now my phone bill is sky high because of late charges. When I told her about it the other day, she went and got her nails done instead of paying her portion of the bill. I think she thinks because she babysits my daughter while I'm working, she can just do whatever, and I'm supposed to accept it and pay her way. I offered to pay her to watch my daughter, but she said that I don't have to pay her to watch her grandchild. April, I hate to do it, but I think my child's, but I think I'm going to get her, her phone turned off. I didn't let my child's father get away with not paying his portion of the phone bill while he was on my plan, so why should I allow her to get away with it as well? My child's father likes and respects my mother, but she but doesn't like the way she disrespects me at times. He also feels as though I let her get away with a lot of shit that I wouldn't allow anyone else to do. April, I have half a mind to wait until I get my income tax refund check and move the hell out and say to hell with her. I know that it will be hard footing the bills for everything, but I honestly just want to be at peace and not have to deal with anyone's bullshit anymore. On the other hand, I don't have any house furniture, just my bedroom set and my daughter's bed and our clothes. I know with the money I have saved, I would be able to buy a few things for my home, but it'll take a little while for me to get it fully furnished. Do you think I should move out or stick around and save a little more money? And how should I handle my mom? Should I cut her off or try and make up? Sorry that it's so long and divas and divos, what do y'all think? Sincerely, a fed up and tired daughter. Wow. So Courtney is 22 years old. She lives at home. She has a daughter. I'm not really sure how old her daughter is, but her daughter's father is incarcerated until 2018. First things first, uh, Courtney works. She goes, um, she's graduated college. She works full time and she lives at home with her mom and her stepfather. Now, she doesn't pay any bills at home. However, her mother does watch her daughter while she's going to work, but Courtney pays her own personal bills like cell phone bills or whatever kind of other bills she has, she pays for her own stuff. However, her mother is on her plan, her cell phone bill plan, and her mother has not been paying her share of the cell phone bill, which is making her bill high or is getting her phone cut off. And her mom and her are basically going back and forth about Courtney's baby father, how she should leave him. Basically, the mother is spewing a lot of dirty things, mean things that Courtney isn't approving of. And the other night, they got into an altercation to where the mother wanted to hit Courtney and instead she hit the laptop, which in return ruined the laptop, broke the computer screen. Now, her stepfather, but Courtney's stepfather is basically like, as long as you go to school or work, you can always live in our household. They don't mind. But the mother wants her gone. And Courtney has saved up enough money. She has got herself a brand new car straight off the lot, which I'm going to give her kudos for because a bitch like me ain't going to buy no brand new car off the lot. So go ahead, girl, for 22 years old, go ahead. And she's been saving her money. She's been working on her credit. She wants to buy her home. And she right about now, she's tired of it. She, she wants to basically turn her mother's phone off. And what should she do? So, let's see. First of all, that's your mom. We're not always right when we tell our kids shit. Sometimes we come along, come off a little bit too strong. I'm going to be the first one to admit and say that because I will go in on my kids without any repercussion. I'll go from 0 to 100 real quick on them. 
or just start off at 100 and not even start off at 0, 5, 10, 15 and work my way up. It's constantly, a lot of times, it's right off at 100 because I just sometimes don't have the patience for nonsense, okay? But then sometimes you got to realize you don't always have to scream at someone to get your point across. You need to basically sit down and talk to them. Now, she watches your daughter for free while you work. You did offer to pay her while you work, but she doesn't want it because that's her grandchild. I can attest to that. I watch my grandson for free while my daughter works. Um, she's offered me, and I don't want it. She, you know, she's, I bring her to work because she doesn't have a car. She's offered me gas money, and she doesn't make a lot, and I'm not about to take her money because, for one, that's my grandson, and he needs the money, and that's for you and him. You got your rent to pay. You got your bills to pay, and sometimes she does need a little help, and I'm more than happy to give it to her because she's a hard worker. However, if your mom is on your phone bill plan and she doesn't pay her bill right away, I'm gonna. I'm a little wishy-washy about this situation, meaning I'm 50-50, because for one, she's doing you a favor even though you've already offered to pay her. If you think about it, if you pay her to watch your kid, it's way more than paying her portion of the phone bill. Because babysitters can get paid at anywhere from two to five hundred dollars a week depending on what they charge you take your child to a daycare center you paying out the ass because they're not cheap so okay your mom doesn't work and i'm i'm thinking she doesn't work because your your stepfather pays all the bills and she watches your child so when is there time for her to work if she's watching your baby um don't be spiteful and cut her phone off because that's just being spiteful because you're angry right now at the moment However, you need to make up with her because regardless of the fact that's your mother, that's the only mother you have, regardless of how she feels about your boyfriend or your lifestyle, she's still the only mother you have. And we are entitled to our opinion and we are entitled to care about our children. However, sometimes, like I said, we go about it in the wrong manner. Now, I'm not going to say I like my daughter's baby father, Tati's, my daughter Tati's baby father. I ain't going to say that because... He ain't the best of the best, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to let her live her life. However, if he do some bullshit that I ain't feeling, or you put hands on somebody, some bullshit like that, best believe April going to get involved in the shit. I'm not going to badmouth him and talk dirty about him to her unless he do some bullshit, and then I'm going to get my opinion. But until then, I'm going to fall back. But the day he do some bullshit, best believe... I'm going to be right there, me and my son, we're going to be right there. Because ain't no bullshit about to pop the fuck off, not in my household or not in her household. But if she's watching your kid for free and she doesn't come through and pay her portion of the bill on time, you got a little bit of slack to, kick, um, to give her. You got to give her a little bit of slack because you got to think about it. She don't work if she don't work. And if she do work, okay, still think about it. She's watching your baby. So at least you could do is pay her portion of the phone bill. You know what I'm saying? Not be spiteful and cut the phone off. Now, y'all are explain, uh, exchanging words and you're basically like to hell with her. Never say the hell with your mom because... Your mom is always going to be there regardless of the decisions that you make, even if they fucked up decisions that fucked your life up and her life up. She's still going to be there for you, just like I'm going to be there for my kids. Regardless how their life is, regardless of the dumb shit they done did, regardless of if we don't get along. Just like with my 23-year-old. We don't speak, we don't get along because he's super disrespectful. You cannot go around telling your family members to suck your dick and fuck you, I hope you die, okay? Shit like that has been said to me. And my daughter. So, if something was to happen to my son, I'm still going to be there for him because that's my blood and that's my child. You know, sometimes you got to just let bygones be bygones and put certain things in the past for certain people. But not always. Now, what's your mom's situation? Okay, she tried to hit you in front of your daughter. She just don't have control. And some people are like that. When they get angry, they got hands. And I'll be the first to admit that's how I am. I can't. I really can't take too much of an altercation with somebody. I can't keep going back and forth with you, arguing with you. Because if I do, I get really, really frustrated. And then that's when these come out. And then I'm just ready to just hold up. And I'm not just ready. I do. I end up smacking the shit out of somebody or hitting them. And that goes for anybody. Boyfriend. Not my kids, but boyfriend, ex-husband, somebody in the street, friend that we... I just don't have the tolerance for a lot of people's bullshit. So I can't altercate with a lot of people sometimes because I just don't have the patience. And my tolerance and my temper level is like this. I don't have the tolerance for bullshit. I don't have 
really a lot of control over my temper sometimes. So I try to just mainly keep to myself and stay away from a lot of the drama and the bullshit. So with that being said, do I think you should move out? I think it's time for you to move out. You know what I'm saying? Because you're living in an unhappy situation, in an unhappy environment. You're feeling like you want to cut your mother's phone off just to be spiteful. And you're basically like the hell with her. Now, here's the thing. When your boyfriend come home in 2018, you're talking about combining his income with yours. What fucking income? Okay? First of all, the motherfucker is still in jail. How you know he gonna come out and get a job? How you know he gonna come out and be so faithful and loyal to you and a hardworking citizen that you want to combine your income with his? Let me tell you something first of all, sweetheart. They in jail and they say a whole shitload of things while they're in jail just to keep you hanging and dangling on by that string. Because they need that comfort zone. Because they need that commissary. Because they need those phone calls, letters, and visits. Okay? So don't fall for everything that he's telling you. Yeah, he was a golden grand when he was out and he did this and did that despite his lifestyle. So I'm not really sure what his lifestyle is. But obviously it's not something great if the nigga is in jail until 2018. It just turned 2016. So he's missing out on you and your daughter's life, okay? And you up there traveling back and forth to visit him and bring your daughter, send him commissary, or what have you. That's all good and dandy, but you know something, Courtney? After a while, that shit get real tiring. Trust and believe I've been there, done that with my ex-husband. That shit get real tiring. I was the same way. I'm going to hold him down and make sure he has everything that he needs. Blah, 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 blah. But the shit got um, a little bit tiring after a couple of years. And then after a couple of times that you kept doing the shit, it got like, okay, you know what? Nigga, grow the fuck up. Your lifestyle sucks. You, If you would have had the proper lifestyle, you wouldn't be in jail. And then nobody wouldn't be having to talk shit about you. I've been there with my own mom. Me and my mother have clashed many a times. She has put me out. She has cut up my clothes. She has written on my clothes with red lipstick, calling me all kind of bitches and shit like that. And she has put me out and my first child out into the dead of winter. And thank God I have friends where I could go stay with them. So I've been there. And you know what's the best thing? For me to move out and find my own, which made me and my mother closer. Sometimes women at a certain age just don't clash. They just clash. They just cannot live together. Now, I cannot say that for my 19-year-old. And then again, I can't. Because there were some things that she did that I just didn't approve of. She's a little bit too lazy sometimes to me. She doesn't keep her room clean to me. And right now, she doesn't keep her own apartment as clean as I would expect. But that's her shit. And I ain't got to live with her. But sometimes we may clash. But for the most part, me and her are like this. We we are the best of friends, and I just left her. She spent two nights over here, went and got her at 3.40 in the morning because she had a bad dream, thought she heard a ghost in her house. 3.47 in the morning, I'm driving down the street. My daughter lives like four or five miles from me to pick her up, her and her son up. You know what I'm saying? So we have a really tight relationship. She ain't about to let nothing happen to me, and I ain't about to let nothing happen to her. But sometimes it's not like that with two females, and sometimes it's just hard to relate to one another unless you are in total opposite homes because you got your way of living she got her way of living she's settling her ways you settling her ways her your ways you can't blame her or knock her for wanting the best for you because you with somebody that's in prison me personally if it was my daughter i would feel the same way just like with my daughter tatiana she's 20 her baby father is in jail as well and he doesn't get out until like 2000 and in this 2016 you think i like i just told her in the car today um when she was talking about his my grandson's other grandmother they don't do shit for him they don't call they don't do anything she had to they got into altercation and she told the other grandmother well you ain't nothing but a fake grandmother anyway you don't call and check up on him you don't do anything my mother is the one who really loves him and Basically, her and her boyfriend broke up over a bunch of shit. And I told her, like, you know what, Tati? You're too good of a person to be with him. And that's all I basically said because it's the truth. He ain't nothing but a little street thug. And my daughter is far beyond that. She's not a thug. She may have made some bad decisions in her life. But she's not a street thug. And she ain't about that life. So... I do put my two cents in it, but I don't bash unless you talk, you start some bullshit with my family. Then we, I'm about to bash the shit out of you. But I do think you should move out and get your own because, for one, you live at your parents' house and you don't pay no bills. That's cool and dandy, but you know what? When we have our own family, we got to move on and move out and be independent. 
and be grown-ups, okay? Not be sitting there in our parents' home arguing with them. Because once you argue with them and you want to cut shit off and things like that, then it's time for you to move out. Now, okay, you done got your car and now you're saying that you don't have much furniture. The only thing you have is your bedroom set for you and your daughter to move into and your clothes. Heck, that's all you fucking need. I'm just saying. At least you have somewhere to sit and sleep, okay? I moved out of my very first apartment. I didn't have shit. Now, when I say I didn't have shit... I ain't have a damn thing, not even a bed, okay? But I wanted to get the hell away from my mom and get the hell away from everybody with my first child. And I moved all the way up to Utica, New York, and I was with somebody. We didn't get along, and I moved into my own apartment. The first night, I'll never forget, me and my son, we slept on the floor on some blankets. And I had a pot and a pan and some paper plates and, like, a couple of forks and knives. This is what I had, some towels, two towels and a washcloth, and some food, you know what I'm saying? And that was what I had in a little TV. The next day when I came home from work, because I was working, um... My landlord, they lived in the house next door, and they went to check on me. They seen that I didn't have anything. They seen that I had just a bed, um, a, a, a bed made of blankets. Do you know, when I came home from work, my landlord brought me one of their beds that they had in storage. They, and it was a queen-size bed. They put it together. They gave me a couch that they had and another television and some, you know, like utensils and things like that. And they had extra little toys that they had and they left those and just left a note. And that was like the blessing in disguise that I needed. Now, I didn't stay at that apartment long because me and my ex, he kept, he was just so confrontational. He would come over to my home. So I left and I moved back to, um, to New York City. But... You don't need a lot to move into an apartment. It's all within due time, okay? People move like myself. I moved all the way to Arizona from New York. Now, granted, I had, I did have some things. I had um, my bed and my daughter's bed. My sons didn't have a bed. I didn't have my living room set anymore. I got rid of that. I, I had to buy certain things. Here's the thing. A lot of people feel like, oh, because they move, they got to buy everything brand spanking new. It don't, you don't have to, okay? We working on a budget, sweetheart. Now, one day, one of these days, I'm going to give you a tour of my house. Um, I just got to get the carpets re-cleaned for the fifth time. They just seem like they, I hate carpets. And they're so light, and they seem like they just don't stay clean long enough. And I have this huge sign on my front door. Take your, remove your shoes or else. That's exactly what it says. It's taped to my front door. Remove your shoes or else, okay? There's a spot where you can put your shoes, but I guess people really don't follow the rules. So there's going to be a whole lot of or else's, all right? However, here's the thing. When I moved here, I didn't have everything. First of all, I had to wait two and a half weeks for what I did have to be delivered, okay? From the movers. I, I went the cheapest route, and it took two and a half to three weeks. Now... What I did, because I'm real, I'm real good at this, I looked on Craigslist. There's Craigslist, and now there's that um, new one called um, OfferUp. They didn't have OfferUp when I first moved out here, so I used Craigslist. I am so familiar with Craigslist and how it works and how to nickel and dime and haggle people for stuff. I found a brand new sectional couch with a pull-out mattress. The lady wanted 400 and I told her, listen, I just moved here. I have nothing. She gave it to me for $240. Brand new. The mattress that you pull out still had the plastic wrapped on it. They were, um, the couch was still brand new looking. It was probably like a couple months old. And $240. I bought a, um, a kitchen table, glass kitchen table. And they wanted 150 I gave them $100. Looked like it was brand new. There are a lot of things in my home that are from Craigslist that you would not believe were from Craigslist. I know how to shop. I know how to go to certain stores and refinish things. A lot of things I repurpose. My jute, my, my furniture in here, like my um, dresser back there. I do have a video on YouTube of how I did it. That was from my old house. It was actually gray. This is 100% oak wood. I painted it with a spray gun, not a spray 
not a can spray paint, but a spray gun. I have decals, like wooden pieces that I hammered onto it, changed the knobs. So the bed, the headboard was green. I bought it from somebody off of Craigslist. I redid that. There are so many things. The wall, white wall hangings and the mirror, I redid that. There are so many different things that you can do. It don't have to be new stuff. There are thrift stores. There is yard sales. There is Craigslist. All you have to do is make your money stretch. So you don't need a lot of stuff to move in anywhere you just need to know how to haggle how to repurpose and how to be creative you know what i'm saying as long as you have a bed then you are okay you know what i'm saying a bed and a tv and you good and you got a car so don't stress it like that but yeah i really do think that you should move out and try to make amends with your mom because she's the only mother that you have she's going to be there for you regardless even if you and your boyfriend work out, she's still going to be regard there. And even if you and he don't, she's still going to be there. But I'm going to tell you this to be honest with you, Courtney. Don't put all your faith in hopes and eggs in a basket for this dude. Because you really don't know what he's capable of doing. I've heard a lot of different stories from men that have been in and out of jail that promise you the world on what they're going to do and how they're going to be. And you know what? Once they hit that gate and it opens up for them, they're a totally different person. They don't sometimes even remember who the fuck you are. So why put yourself in that predicament and then your mom was right and then you got to go back and apologize the first thing you need to do now is apologize to her and make amends with her and figure things out you know what i'm saying let her know about the bill and how it's making your charges more and see if you guys can work something out but she does do you the favor of watching your daughter and you should be very grateful for that because if she has to charge you then you're going to be paying high out of the ass way more than a phone bill but first things first she's your mother respect her we're wrong sometimes we're not always right and i'll be the first to say that i apologize to my kids when i snap off for no given reason but i'm the only mother that they have and I would never, ever put any man before my kids. So don't put any man before your mom because she's your mom. You know what I'm saying? So just give Courtney your advice. What would you do in this situation? How would you handle it? Okay, so, the next real talk. Hi, April, you can call me Shiva. I've been enjoying watching your vids for a long time, and I thought I'd hit you up and ask your opinion. Last summer, a friend that I'd known for two years and I decided to become a couple. For the most part, he's a great guy and supporter, but there are some things that bother me. First, he's, first, he's never bought a gift for me, or at least, I've never gotten one from him. From him. So, first, he's never bought a gift from for me, or at least I've never gotten one from him. I made sure that he had birthday and Christmas presents, and he says that he has, um, and he says that he has mine, but hasn't sent them to me. We're in a long-distance relationship. I knew not to expect anything for Valentine's Day, and just like I thought, I didn't get anything from him then either. By the way, he says he's never had a woman he was with buy him a gift, ever. So, he was really touched that I thought enough of him to do that. Second, it bothers me that he doesn't let me know where he is at at times. He's a truck driver, and in his previous job, he worked such crazy hours that all he would do on the weekends is go to his parents' house and sleep because he hated the town he stayed in and he said he couldn't get any rest. I didn't mind him catching up on his rest, but there are times I wouldn't hear from him all weekend, not even a text. He has another job where he's driving cross-country now, and there have been already times where I don't know where he is. He does tell me where his he does tell me where his final destinations are though. I'm not the clingy type. I just want to know if he's all right or safe. Driving can be dangerous. Another thing, I don't think his mother knows about me, but I told my mom about him. So April, do you think I'm in my feelings too much? I'm not materialistic. I can buy my own stuff, but you can take the time to at least send someone a damn card, right? Shaking my head. If I'm honest, I'm at the point where I don't think we should be together anymore. I hope to hear from you soon. Okay. So, 
Miss Shiva then went ahead and changed the names. And so she's in a long distance relationship with a guy. He's a truck driver. She's buying him gifts. He's not returning the favors, buying her anything. She ain't get shit for Valentine's Day. He doesn't call her and let him let her know where he's at. So she's a little worried about that. She feels as though he has not told his mother about her. She doesn't hear from him all weekend and etc. etc. But she's not the clingy type and she's not materialistic. So what should she do? Hmm. Uh, she and her feelings. I'm going to tell you this much, Shiva. First of all, you might be in your feelings a little bit too much because let me tell you something, and this is just from past experience. If you keep worrying about a nigga, worrying about them, and bitching to them like, oh, you don't call me, tell me where you at, ah, uh, I don't know where you at, why you ain't call me, they not going to call you. Sometimes when we put too much emphasis on shit, they just feed off of that shit. And it's fucked up to say they feed off of it. And it don't even have to be they as in him. It could be as in she as well. The same can go for the opposite sex, okay? Let me tell you something. If you don't want to call me, I'm not going to constantly call and nag you. That's just me. However, he a grown man. If something happened to him a million miles away, what the fuck are you going to do? Are you going to hop on the next jet and fly the fuck out there and rescue him? If he is stranded on the roadside somewhere and millions of states away, what the fuck are you going to do? Hop in your ride and save him? No. It's cool to know where he at. However, he's grown, you're grown. Stop putting so much emphasis on the relationship and let it you know, make its way. Sometimes men and sometimes women don't like people to constantly be at them about where you at, why you don't let me know where you're at, blah, 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 or, you know, things of that nature. I'm one of those people. If I'm not at the house, don't keep fucking calling me and asking me where I'm at, when I'm going to come home, shit like that, because I find that to be very irritating. If something is wrong, I'm going to be the first one to let you know, yo, something the fuck is wrong. However, you're having a long-distance relationship, and you're right. The least thing you could do is send a fucking card. I'm shaking my head. Because if you buy him shit, and he's not even returning the favors with a card or a love letter, write it by hand, then who is giving more in a relationship? It ain't about give, 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 get, 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 get. It's about a 50-50 relationship. We're going to bond together and do this shit together. But... Some people don't feel that way. Some people just feel like they want to constantly get. And they want to be the one to be chased. Here's the thing. When you stop chasing and you fall back, then they start thinking, hmm, why she ain't calling me? Why she ain't texting me? She ain't send me nothing for Valentine's Day, Christmas, birthday, honeymoon specials, nothing. She didn't send me shit. She ain't even texting me. Then that gets them to wonder, okay, let me reach out to them. I'm going to be the first to say it. that would be me with my ex-husband in the beginning. Not even the beginning, but in the middle. I would constantly call him because he would be running the streets. And I would be cr You don't ever spend no time with me. Oh, all you want to do is run the street. Oh, all you want to do is sell drugs. Oh, all you want to do is do this. All you want to do is do this. But you'll never, excuse me, you'll never spend no time with me. After a while, April got tired of saying that shit. April got tired of crying at night. And April just got tired and April became very numb and it wasn't that I did it on purpose but I just stopped not even caring but I stopped calling I stopped saying you're not spending any time with me I stopped nagging and then that's when he started saying oh you don't care you're cold you don't do this nigga I been said that shit to you and you been was ignoring me so what the fuck is it now a long distance relationship sometimes is very hard to keep okay because for one you don't really know what the other person is doing and i'm not saying he's doing anything but you don't really know and in the beginning of my relationship that i have right now it was a long distance relationship um because he was always in new york he was working in new york and now he's here now he's back in new york for like two or three weeks he's left on saturday but i'm gonna tell you what though I'm fucking happy he's not here and I'm fucking happy he's gone because I need my space and I need time to breathe and just get the fuck away from me, okay? Because sometimes you get on my goddamn nerves and I want to chop your fucking head off and send it to your mother in a cardboard box and let her know, here you go. Okay, that's how I be feeling on some real shit, alright? And I'm going to be the first to tell you, I don't know if this whole living together situation is working for me because as much as I love him, we are in pictures, we kissy, boo-boo, whatever... 
I'm the type of female where I need my space. I don't need you clean up under me. I don't need you calling my phone when you're coming home. I ain't miss you. I don't need that shit, okay? I think because I've been through enough in my relationship and it wasn't the best marriage and it wasn't the best relationship to where I just need to be the one who reaches out and tells you, hey, what you doing? So, I haven't spoken to him in, like, since, what, two days yet. Because I don't want to talk to you. Like, first of all, we didn't, when I left him at the airport, I just was a little pissed off with him anyway. So, I was glad that he left. I was a little pissed off, like a lot of pissed off. So, I was really glad that he left. And I really don't want to communicate with him right now. And he knows how I am. So, the best thing for me is for you to leave me alone. And not to mention, you constantly interrupted my videos. You in my background in my videos. You... It just be enough sometimes and I'm not a selfish person but sometimes I don't really need to hear you tell me well I bought you this I, oh you happy with this right oh cuz daddy bought you this yeah, yeah. nigga please I could have bought all of this shit this new camera this fucking Mac on my own I didn't need your help I could have bought it on my own all right but you bought it out of the kindness of your heart but I don't really constantly need to be reminded of that shit in a second I'm gonna take the shit and I'm gonna chuck it out the window or you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to my account and I'm gonna be like here's the money for this and that and now you can't say you bought me a motherfucking thing because I gave you the money back but that's neither here nor there I just had to get that off my chest because I just don't like shit like that um because when you give somebody something, stop throwing it up in their face. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw that shit up in their face because that shit is weak and is whack. Like, nobody cares. Nobody cares to hear that shit constantly. You know what I'm saying? You act like you gave me heaven. You gave me a fucking computer and a, compu and a camera. Thank you and I appreciate it and I'm very grateful for it. But I don't need to constantly hear the shit because I don't do it to you. I don't say I gave you this and I gave you that. I don't do that shit. But, Shiva, the thing is with this, you give him stuff, he don't give you nothing. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You don't give people stuff to get shit in return. That's not what we do. However, if he's not communicating with you on the levels that you would expect him to, then maybe it's time that you get to walk in. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like he has not told his mother about you or his family about you, but you have... And that's not what makes you feel comfortable, then maybe you need to say something to him. Communication is always the key in any relationship, whether it's long distance or close distance. It's always the key. And without that, it's not going to be much of anything. However, like I stated, long distance relationships are something that is really hard to work with. Now, I'm not really sure how you met him. Did you meet him on the internet? If so, then I wouldn't really fuck with it like that. Valentine's Day, yeah, I just celebrated Valentine's Day. Have not celebrated in years, okay? So I was really happy with the shit that I got. But, you know what I'm saying? Every day is Valentine's Day if you really care about someone and you love someone. It ain't about what he got you or what you got him. However, I feel you. I totally feel you. Why do you have to keep giving, giving, giving and you don't get anything in return? I want a motherfucking card or write me a letter by hand. That's even more sufficient. That's what I, I would like. You know what I'm saying? But, you need to sit down on the phone and talk to him verbally not some bullshit text messaging i'm not really sure how long distance the relationship is and you say he's a good guy however there are things about him that you really just don't like and sometimes you need to take that into perspective and evaluate it because what are you going to do are you going to sit around and keep waiting for him to change and be the person that you wanted him to be when he's constantly on the road and he doesn't even communicate with you what are you really getting out of this relationship are you happy to just get a phone call a text message and then carry on in your day or do you want somebody to woo you woo woo you meaning be around you be companionship with you company to you friendship to you walk in the parks with you love life together with you is that what you want if that is what you want then this guy that you're with is not the one for you you know what i'm saying he is a truck driver and he's constantly on the road and he's not able to communicate with you on your standards so sometimes you have to look at the grass on the other side of the fence and see is it really fucking green or is that shit dried the fuck up because right about now, that shit look like it need a whole lot of water. And if you're going to constantly complain about someone that is in a long-distance relationship with you and they're not making you happy, because long-distance relationships don't make people happy sometimes as well. But if you're going to constantly complain and you're feeling less of a person and he's not communicating with you as well and he doesn't return gifts or he doesn't write your card or anything like that, but he says he has gifts for you but hasn't sent them, who the fuck buys shit for people and don't send the shit out? I'm just trying to figure that out. Hmm. That right there to me seems like it's a lie and it's up and he ain't buy you shit. Don't lie about buying me stuff. Just be real. Be fucking real. 
So in my opinion, what I would do is evaluate the situation. Pros and cons, sweetheart. Pros and cons. And know your worth. Don't sit around waiting on anybody. That goes for man or woman. If you're in a relationship with somebody and they are doing shit that you just totally despise. And they are not coming through as you would want them to. As you would do for them. Why the fuck are you going to stay in a relationship? Love is a very strong thing and it's a strong ass battle. And sometimes it be having our minds all fucked up, okay? Trust and believe. I'll be the first to tell you. My mind has been so fucked up over love so many times. Even the relationship that I'm in right now, sometimes I get fucked up in the head. Because it's like, okay, you know what, nigga? You ain't about to fucking think you're going to say whatever the fuck you're going to say to me. And I'm, that's the type of person I am. Because I'm not about to let you run off at the mouth. Okay, because I'm that strong-willed and I've already been through some shit and I'll cut your throat in a deep second. But sometimes I'll let you get away with just a little bit. You might might take a whole motherfucking foot. An inch, you might take a foot. And then that's where it's like, you know what? Ah! Hold the fuck up. So my best situation or my best um, statement or opinion for you or advice would be to evaluate the situation. Know your worth. Know who you are as a person and evaluate it. And if he ain't coming through like you would expect him to, you can't force him to. He gonna be who he gonna be. And maybe it's time for Shiva to move the fuck on. So let Shiva know, ladies, how would you deal with the situation? So the last one here, we're gonna try to get to this one really quick before I run out of time on this memory card, okay? Hey April, call me Crystal. I'm writing to you because I need some advice and your honest opinion. I'll try my best to make this long story short. I was with my boyfriend for over a year. We broke up yesterday on February 15th. I know, a day after Valentine's Day. Anyway, before we broke up, we got into an argument and he called me out my name repeatedly. So I cursed him out as well and disrespected him since he disrespected me. I told him to get out of my car and he did. He walked home and when I took him off my phone bill... Um, and then I took him off my phone plan. But what I don't understand is how can you love someone and call that person out of their name? Do everything for that person and be everything. I mean everything. I made sure he was on his feet when I first met him. He wasn't working, didn't have a car. He was lost. But I helped him get a job, managed his money, brought him to work, took him anywhere and everywhere he needed to go. I was there for him through everything. We've broken up numerous of times because of the same reason. He would get upset and call me out of my name, then apologize and say he was mad. He's under a lot of stress and he says he won't call my name out again but this time it was the last straw he really hurt me so I broke up with him I no longer have him on my line before I cut his line he was still texting me leaving voice messages of him talking bad about me and disrespecting me when he finally cooled off he apologized said he loves me and misses me but I didn't respond I took him off my phone plan and yes I was paying his phone bill like I said I was doing everything for him and I still love him but to be honest I don't want to be with him anymore I feel disgusted to go back with him I just don't understand why he's treating me that way I was 100% faithful I took care of him and I was always there for him and he and him and his family financially and physically what why did he feel the need to treat me this way was I doing too much I would spoil him to death I wouldn't get anything to, in return his excuse would be he's broke or I need to save or I need to save this money for my car but then we'll go out and blow his check and while we were together he would still contact his ex-girlfriend I read some of the messages and he was calling her bae, then would text another girl and ask her when would they, when could they chill. And then when I would confront him, he would say, I was just, I just like the attention. I'm not having sex with them. They're not my girlfriends. They're nobodies. And then we will have another argument. But at this point, what did I do wrong? Was he just using me? Did the love go away or did I go too far and do too much as a girlfriend? I'm 19 and he's 23. I'm still young, but part of me thought he was the one or was I just blind? Thank you. Crystal. So first of all, Crystal's been with some dude on and off, okay? Um, they broke up the day after Valentine's Day. She's been doing all types of shit for this nigga. Bring him to work, bring him everywhere, pays his phone bill, give him money, do whatever. The nigga be calling her out of his name, out her name, be cussing her the fuck out on the phone that she pays for. What did she do wrong? Bitch, what the fuck you did wrong is you gave that nigga too much. He was fucking using you. There's no way on God's green earth you're going to be texting some next bitch or ex bitch on the phone line that I pay for and tell me that you just want the fucking attention and that they're nobodies to you. Are you out your rabbit ass mind? Girl, please. If he called you a bitch, a cunt, a, a douchebag, whatever the fuck he called you, and then going to turn around and apologize for that shit and then do it again and then do it again and do it again. You got 
one motherfucking strike. You do that shit one time, you can apologize. You're not gonna continuously do me like I ain't shit and act like you forgot what the fuck I bought you, how I took care of you, what the fuck I do for you, and you don't do anything in return for me. Yes, bitch, he's fucking using you. He's gonna get whatever the fuck he can out of you, and that is that. What the fuck you need to do is cleanse your soul and don't worry about his ass. Fuck him. Love is hard to get over, but you know what? I trust and believe and tell you this much. Sweetheart, you will get over him with the quickness and you will save a whole lot of money. Like Geico, save money. For real. That nigga is a piece of shit, alright? Mm. I have been called out of my name enough fucking times, okay? And I'll be the first to tell you. I've had an argument with my boyfriend in here. We've had an argument. And he called me out of my name, okay? He sure did. Um, and then one call, turn around and apologize and shit like that. Ain't nobody got time for that bullshit. So as I was saying before, my memory card died. Well, sweetheart, you are being used. He is really taking advantage of you. First of all, you're not about to call me out of my fucking name. You got one time. And I have been called out of my name many a times, not from the same person. Once from my uh, my my fiance right now he's called me out of my name and i had to let him have it he's apologized but however here's the thing you want to constantly call somebody out their name and then apologize especially if you're on their phone line you about to be out your rabbit ass mind to think that you're about to call somebody out their name first of all you will find your shit packed the fuck up out the door and you won't be able to get up in this motherfucker second of all i'll be damned if i'm going to be taking you here and there and you don't give me anything in return you leeching off me you call me all kinds of names you texting calling speaking to all kind of bitches talking about you like the attention here's the attention that you're gonna get none from me sweetheart keep him off your phone line stay the far the fuck away from him as soon as possible leave him the fuck alone love is a hard thing to get over but let me tell you something eventually you get over it there's no reason for anybody to be mistreated in a relationship because they want love it's called love not mistreated love unloved when you're being treated a mistreated in a fucked up negative way then there's no love there he seems to me like he is a fucking pawn of the scum scum pawn pawn of the scum whatever you want to call him where he's using you and he's going to get whatever he is or whatever it is he can get out of you as long as you continuously give it to him yeah he says sorry but you know what his apologies really don't mean anything much if he's continuously doing it and he's going back to doing it so what should you do the one thing you should do is leave him alone if you already said that you don't want to be with him anymore you've already got your mind right okay don't let your heart take over because sometimes the heart wants what the brain doesn't the brain can sometimes over override the brain on um, the heart and a lot of times the heart will override the brain okay and that is to be said with a lot of us in relationships we let niggas men bitches do whatever the fuck they want sometimes and get over it and we will fucking be okay with an apology after a while however that apology the first time can maybe seem genuine but if you constantly do in the same shit and you're apologizing then your shit is not sincere and you really don't mean what you're saying you're just apologizing to get over and get through and let me forget about the shit so that we can continuously go on to this relationship and then you can stir up the next bullshit so let him continuously ch text whoever but then again how's he gonna text anybody if he's not in your phone plan so my advice to you my dear would be to move on with your life and like Geico, save your money, okay? Because I'll be damned if I'm gonna let some bullshit ass Negro play me, take me for what I've got, and then call me out my motherfucking name. Not once, not twice, but on several occasions. And call me out my fucking name on my phone line and then text the next bitches on my phone line. A lot of people these days get a lot of shit misconstrued with sincerity and apology. And it don't matter if you're in a relationship or a friendship. They get a lot of shit misconstrued because they feel like they've said sorry and that is just going to override your heart or your feelings. Let me tell you something. When I get mad, I get mad. And if you apologize, that's fine. Thank you for your apology. But that don't mean that my sadness and my hurt feelings are supposed to go away automatically because you fucking apologized to me. You said some dumb shit, some fucking astronomical shit that just don't fucking sit well with me. You are mannerly challenged for one. Mannerly fucking challenge, meaning your ass don't have no fucking manners, okay? And you're just not right. 
we all as women as men want to be in a relationship with somebody where we feel appreciated and loved okay and everybody goes through shit in a relationship everybody goes through an argument in a relationship sometimes everybody goes through name calling things that are said that are not nice because we are in our feelings and things like that but that does not give it you the person or the other person the right to continuously do it and feel like saying sorry is okay and it's going to make my hurt feelings or your hurt feelings go away it does not work like that in the real world okay sometimes we got to sit back and relax and just think about who we are or what we want as a person i have done this for a long time thinking about who i am and what i want as a person meaning i have been in a relationship with someone for 16 years and i loved him and over the time, he has said sorry probably like a million times. And I've let it go plenty of times. However, the many times I've let it go, it just seemed like it has gotten worse. And it was time for April to find out who she was and who she wanted to be. I didn't need to be with anybody. Though, don't get me wrong. I love to be with someone. I love companionship. I love to be loved, okay? Who doesn't love to be loved? But there comes a point in time in our life when... We have been through so much headache, so much bullshit, and just been miserable that we have to take the time out for ourselves and not jump into another relationship. It's nice and it's a beautiful thing to be in a relationship, a healthy relationship. However, you cannot be in a healthy relationship if you're not in a healthy relationship with yourself. Knowing your self-worth, knowing who you are, knowing what you want, and knowing the shit that you are going to tolerate and not tolerate. You know what I'm saying? And me being as a person, I don't really tolerate a lot of shit. And that's because of my last relationship. You know, some things I may go overboard on because I'm so protective of myself and my kids and who I am and what I want in life life and I'm not about to go through the same shit again however the main key is number one you have to love yourself if I had to choose right now and if say my relationship didn't work out and like I said I want to be loved and as much as I love this person that I'm with but it didn't work out for me because he did dumb shit and I just wasn't dealing with it then I would have to let him go you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to put myself at bay for someone else just because I want to be loved. Because it's not right. It's not healthy. And I'm not going to sit around and be miserable with someone that's not making me totally, completely happy. I'm not saying give me the world. I'm not saying give me gifts all the time. But give me love and affection and the respect that I deserve. And that's the number one key to any relationship. It's not about buying shit for the person. It's not about giving, getting, or any of that. It's about respect. And without that, you're not going to have a healthy relationship. So, for you, my dear the best thing for you to do is to leave him alone because he's so unhealthy is so toxic for you and i say that freely because i've been there and i know the feeling though my husband wasn't a jackass like that he wasn't texting no bitches or shit not that i know of but it was unhealthy for me and it brought me out of my character after a while because i'm not the type of person i don't like to go around altercate with people i don't like to go around bashing people upside the head and knocking them the fuck out like i've had to do to him several times on his drunken days that's not me you know what i'm saying i shouldn't have to go through that you know what i'm saying i'm a human being i love peace i love harmony i love feng shui and here's my thing if i can't have that in a relationship then i don't want to be with no fucking body and i say this to my fiance now all the time if it ain't working out between me and you, then I'd rather just be by myself because I don't need the stress and headache of no man fucking aggravating me and stressing me the fuck out. Life is short, very, very short, whether you know it or not. Very short. And it's so short to where don't allow yourself to be miserable because of the company of somebody else. Be it your family member, be it your friend, be it your kids, be it your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Don't allow your life to be miserable because of the company that you keep. Sometimes we have to let people go, you know what I'm saying? And it hurts because of how we feel about them. But over time, we eventually get over it and we continually move on with our lives, bettering ourselves. And certain experiences help us through life. Because without experiences, you would not be able to progress in life so experiences is one thing it's a part of life you know what i'm saying it's an experience and we learn from it and what we learn we take it and we move on and we better ourselves whether we are alone in a relationship for two years you know what i'm saying it is what it is but at least you have peace of mind and with that being said peace of mind is the best thing in the world take it from me i have had peace of mind for like two and a half years and i love it and if this doesn't work out my relationship and i'm not saying it's not working out but i'm just saying for few and just saying if it doesn't work out hey it, i tried but i'm not gonna make myself miserable over a man 
or if I was with a female, I'm not about to make myself miserable over a female neither. Either way, I'm not going to make myself miserable in my short span of life. I have kids to deal with, grandkids to take care of, and I have to live for them and live for myself. So, with that being said, let all the divas and divos know your opinions of these situations, these topics, and if you have a real talk that you want advice on, go ahead and shoot me an email. I hope you girls enjoyed today's episode, and as always, stay diva and divolicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll check you girls out on my next video.